for complicated reasons I want to explain, but I'm basically I'm sharing my screen, but it's actually of another computer that's connected to a router. So this is a Netgear, and oh, this is probably about oh, five, six years old. Uh, it's a WNR 2000, and it's got a basic and advanced mode. And when you're setting up a router, there's they're all going to be different depending on the brand as to how they lay out their their menus and their wizards and so forth. But there's really just like some core things that you have to set in order for it to work. The good news is lately, in the past few years, I've noticed that a lot of the ISPs and the routers have become so plug and play that there's almost not much to do, except that sometimes you probably should go in and tighten up some of the security. So said another way, sometimes what's happened is, is that they, they've uh, – they basically just take them out of the box, connect the wires from the ISP modem to the router, and off you go. Um, but let's talk about some of the different things that might hang you up if you're still trying to set something like this up. So the core of what you need to, uh, to, to get started is your internet connection. And so in here, um, the internet connection is basically the IP address or the, the, the tunnel that you use to get from your local network through the modem that the, that the internet company has provided you, so like a cable modem or, or whatever, and out to the greater internet. And sometimes that's referred to as a gateway. So your gateway can be your, your path uh, is another word that they sometimes use to refer to the, the path to the internet. And um, so if it's pretty much plug and play, there's actually not much to do here. So for instance, if, you're, if your internet doesn't require a login, then you're good. But you will sometimes, I guess, still get these, what they call PPOE connections, where you have to provide um, a username and a password, which would have been given to you by the, uh, by the internet company. All right, so if you, if you have, instructions the internet company to enter your PPOE information, this is where it would go. All right, also, uh, typically, you're going to, unless, again, unless the internet company has told you specifically, here is the address we want you to put into your routing equipment, typically, you just leave it as get dynamic from ISP, meaning when you're connected, let the internet company give you the IP address uh, for your wide area network connection or for your gateway. Now, DNS is another key piece to this. And again, typically, you can just set it to get automatically from ISP. So let's just talk for a second what DNS is. DNS is the way that when you put names into your computer browser, like yahoo.com or google.com, those names have to be translated or converted into an IP address. Well, the DNS is like the online phone book that does that. And DNS can either be set by you, like you can say, I want to use Google's phone book or Google's DNS, um, or I can just let the internet company, say, for instance, Comcast or um, Spectrum or, uh, or Charter, provide the, the, the DNS server for me. However, if you don't have any DNS, like for instance, if you say use these DNS servers and you, and you don't, and these are all zeros, then what will happen is you'll have a network connection, but you won't have any way to convert domain names or like yahoo.com and, and uh, google.com. You won't have any way for those to be translated into, uh, into usable, uh, uh, you know, to get to the websites. So that is the reason for DNS. All right. So typically, again, it's just let, you know, set it to get automatically from ISP. If you don't want that, or if you're troubleshooting a problem and you do want to manually set an IP address, uh, a, a manual DNS server, a good one to use is Google's DNS. That's a very typical uh, troubleshooting method that is seen in the IT industry. And that is 8.8.8 .8 and 8.4.4. So you have a, a primary and a secondary. It, Usually it uses the primary, but if for some reason it can't get to it, it'll it'll go to the uh, to the secondary. All right, let me pause for just a second. I have to check something on my stream. Let's say something here. Okay, great. All right, just just checking my my settings. All right, so um, router MAC address that's rare. 
that I've ever seen that be specified. That used to be common back in, in the old DSL days where they would say, here, you need to you know, specify this, this MAC address for your router. Uh, today, I almost never see that anymore. So I just leave that as use default address. All right, so those are internet connection settings. Now, the other piece of this is your LAN settings, L-A-N, local area network. And here in this basic wizard, I don't really see a spot for setting that up because typically what will happen is they'll just set it up for you. Um, if I switch over here to the advanced tab, I get better options. I can go in here to setup, and then here I've got LAN setup. So with LAN setup, we've got two decisions to make. Um, if you're a beginner, the default decision is let DHCP assign the addresses and let DHC, and let your router determine what the DHCP scope is. I know I just said a lot, let's back up. So an IP address is the number that you get, kind of like a postal address for your individual computer, which helps tell the router, you know, I'm the one that asked for this website and when the website answers, I want you to get the information back to me. So it's like a, like a postal address, kind of like where you receive mail. Um, every computer on your network has to have an IP address if it's going to participate in the network and if it's going to work with the, uh, with, the, with the router going out to the Internet. So you can either choose to manually set those IP addresses, and if you're new to the industry or new to the, the game of networking, I recommend you don't do that. Um, but if you do, you can come in here and you can say, okay, I'm going to maybe uncheck this use router as DACP server, and maybe I'll specify a different server. Maybe I'll have a different server on my address, um, I mean, on my network, uh, hand out the addresses. The other thing you can do is you can say, well, I want to change the default. So instead of saying I want, you know, the default 192.168.0.1, which is pretty, pretty common, another one you see a lot is, is 192.168.1.1 is another very common default local area network address. You might say, you know what, I don't want that. I want to use 10.10.0.1, uh, right? And you got to be a little careful with this. You can't just make up any number you want. And the reason is because they're, they're in the IP version 4, which is these, these addresses I'm showing you right here, there are ranges that are some are for internal, like for local area networks, and then there's some that are for external, you know, for the for the internet, and they're managed by what they call the ICANN, which is the the I can't remember what ICANN stands for, but it's a it's a governing body um, that manages the internet. So you might want to look that up before you just randomly start changing these numbers. But I can tell you, one nine two one six eight, um, that whole range is okay uh, for in, internal use, and then the ten dot ten, uh, I believe that whole range is okay. Um, but so imagine I want to change this. And then down here in the in the DHCP server scope, it doesn't say scope on here, but this is what it is. Scope meaning this is the range of addresses I want you to hand out. So when a new computer starts up, I want you to provide the first computer with a blah, 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 dot 120. And then when the next one is blah, 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 121 and 122, 123. So it's handing out these addresses as new computers come online. And it'll do that all the way until it gets to 150. In the event you have more than 30 devices on your network, which today actually is kind of almost possible because remember, not only are we talking about computers, but we're talking about phones, tablets, IP cameras, other little devices that use the internet. So you could, you could move this out. You could move this scope out. You can move it out as far as, um, you could go as high as 254. Just be careful you're not stepping on top of something else that's already being used. Occasionally, you will see these routers come with default addresses of um, uh, where the where the the, uh, the default uh, what they call gateway is uh, uh, 254. So just watch out you don't hand out that address. In fact, I bet the machine's probably smart enough not to do that. But anyway, um, but yeah, so you could in fact, and even this number right here could come down too. This could actually come down all the way to like 10. That would give me a huge 244 or 243 range of, of numbers I could use. All right, so that's your local area network DHCP settings and scope, all right? The other thing that you might want to do, depending on whether you're gonna use your router as a combination, you know, local area network switch and wireless, because a lot of them now come with wireless, is you've got your wireless uh, 
menus. So wireless, the most important thing you need to know about wireless is what is the SSID, which is the, the network identifier. It's kind of like, you know, what station do you want to connect to? Because when you have you noticed when you turn on your phone and you search for Wi-Fi or you turn on your laptop, you search for Wi-Fi, you see all these network names out there. Those are called SSIDs. And they're they're an advertisement um, in the sense that they're saying, you know, this network is available for you to connect to. The next thing you'll need, though, is what's known as the uh, the SSID uh, password or the, the, the Wi-Fi password. And you can set that a lot of times here. Um, I'm not going to go into all the different security options only because I'm just not that much of a guru on it. I typically take the default, which is the WPA2. And um, most devices are compatible with that. If you want to do some homework and get a little more sophisticated, you can. Um, I certainly do not recommend uh, leaving your network wide open. In other words, don't choose none. Don't leave your network wide open. That's a very bad practice, unless for some reason you're really advanced and you know how to put some security checkpoints a little bit um, uh, further upstream to prevent people from abusing your network. All right? All right, so you need your SSID. Again, a lot of times it's already defaulted for you. In fact, these days when you buy a router, oftentimes it will have a sticker right on it that will say your SSID is, the default password is, and you might want to consider changing that password. Um, you don't have to, but it's not a bad idea. And you, you, know, you may say, well, what's the big deal if somebody else gets on my network? Well, there's a couple of things that can happen that, that are big in my mind. One is, is they can use your internet to perpetrate crime, which then can put you in a bad situation, right? Because now you know the authorities come looking for you. The second thing they can do is they can get access to devices on your network. And you might think that that's no big deal. Like, ah, so what? There's nothing on my network. There's, I don't, I don't, I do my taxes manually. I don't keep any, you know, personal information on my computers. Doesn't matter. Well, but they can then hijack your computer by installing software on it to do their dirty work for them, even when they're not connected to your network. And they can use it as what they call man in the middle to absorb information from you as you're going about your daily life and you're conducting your, your banking and your, your online activities. It can, they can be absorbing that information. So you don't want other people on your Wi-Fi network. All right. QoS is a little bit advanced. Um, but it has to do with voice over IP and devices that require what they call uh, real-time streaming. So this might be applicable for gaming. I'm not a gamer, so I don't know. Um, but uh, I'm not going to go through all this, but just telling you what QoS is, it has to do with prioritizing the traffic so that it, it makes sure that traffic that relies on timely delivery and receipt uh, happens in a... Uh, in uh, it, it, it the most priority as opposed to kind of a first in first out uh, type of I mean yeah for, for first in yeah I think I said that right and um, all right so QS and the C in WAN setup I don't know if there's anything there because we already kind of talked about that when we were in um, when we were in the basic tab where we were talking about setting up the gateway you know the your connection to the to the modem in the wide area into the internet. Uh, looks like here, though, you could specify some things. Occasionally, when you're working with a tech technical person to solve a problem, they might have you mess with the MTU. 1500 is very typical. Um, looks like you could set up a DMZ if you wanted to. A DMZ server or a DMZ zone is like a – it's like an area that – where you expose it to the, to the Internet. So, for instance – in a typical router setup, you've got the connection to the to the internet, which is your gateway, and then you've got your local area network, which is everything, you know, behind the router, which is stuff you want to keep private from from the greater internet. You don't want people to have direct access to. There are occasions though when you want to expose a particular device or machine or server to the outside world, and that's what the DMV, DMZ. Uh, settings are for. It's kind of an advanced setting. I haven't used it in a while. All right. Um, another cool thing is if you want to set up a guest network. And this can be handy when you do want to allow people to connect to your Wi-Fi, but not have access to uh, 
to devices on your network. And um, there should be, I believe, a place you can specify a different set of IP addresses. You see, there's the guest. Um, you could set a password. But what I was looking for is if there was going to be a thing where you could have a different set of IP addresses. Um, oh, I think this is it right here. Okay, yeah, allow guests to see each other and access my local. Okay, so apparently if you don't check that, it, it, it gives them a connection to the Internet but doesn't let them see other devices on your network. All right, I was looking for something a little more advanced where you could actually hand out a different set of IP addresses, which would, which would kind of create the, uh, the same thing. Let's see, if I do this... No, I was thinking maybe that would give me another another set of dialog boxes, but it didn't. All right. So, and see, now I'm on the advanced tab. Now, there's an advanced setup. I wonder how much more advanced we can get. Let's see. Uh, port forwarding. This might be something you, you might do. What this is, is when, remember I said that you, you generally don't want your devices exposed to the internet directly. However, in certain situations, you might have a particular service. Um, so for instance, like for me, I've done, I don't see it here. I've done like VNC, which is remote access to my computers. And what you're doing is you're saying, whenever somebody uh, is using, you see it doesn't give me a place for port. Let's see if I can, can I just edit one maybe? Let's see if it'll let me know. All right, let's try this again. Let's see if I go to, let's just let's just make one. Let's just say, for instance, just we'll just do HTTP. And then we'll say that the server we're going to expose for that is going to be, I don't know, 10. There's no real server there, but let's just pretend. Okay. Now let me see if it'll let me edit it. All right, because what I want to do is put a port, a port on it. So let's see here. Okay, so I could call this something else. I could call this VNC, and I could change the port to be, I think it's like 505901. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's what I wanted. Right. Okay, and then apply that, and I'll explain what I, what I did. So what I've done is I've created a, a special port forwarding that says if... I'm or somebody outside in the in the wide the wider you know internet like I'm at a Starbucks or something and I want to connect to my VNC enabled computer back at my home um, I can go to the IP address of my of my uh, router which is probably going to be something you know that the, that the internet company provides to me like a 72.243.x.x and then when I put the port number colon 5901 at the end of it when it hits my router, it will take and direct that traffic straight to the computer that's got 192.168.0.10. All right, so that's that's what port forwarding does. So if you ever run into that where somebody is saying, well, in order to make this work, you have to set up port forwarding, that is what that's about, is port forwarding. Some of these are already pre-made, um, but I just I just went and edited one and, and made one of my own called VNC. So, all right. Well, let's see if I've forgotten anything. Like I said, the core to what you need in order to use a router straight out of the box is that it connects to the network and dynamically gets an IP address from the modem or from the from your internet providing company that it uh, provides DNS servers either through the internet provider company or you set your own through Google like the 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Um, and then your LAN settings. Again, a lot of times those are already set up by default. All you really have to do is just plug your computers into the switch ports and the DHCP will hand out the default addresses and you'll be good. But if you do need to modify them, then that would be a way you, you could do it. Well, I hope you found this useful. There was not much going on in the way of um, chat traffic, so there wasn't much to, to talk about in terms of questions. So, um, but maybe next time. And I will sign off for now, and uh, maybe we'll do some more of this, depending on what kind of feedback I get from you guys. All right. Thanks for watching.